welcome to this recorded service of Holy Communion for Ash Wednesday from St Thomas's Church, High Lane. If you'd like to join us, either by telephone or on Zoom for other acts of worship or events during Lent, then you can find out more details on our website, st-thomas-high-lane.org.uk or see further details in our parish magazine or on our notice boards. But now we gather ourselves together wherever we are, taking a moment of silence as we prepare to worship together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Brothers and sisters in Christ, since early days Christians have observed with great devotion the time of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and have prepared for this by a season of penitence and fasting. By carefully keeping these days, Christians take to heart the call to repentance and the assurance of forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel, and so grow in faith and devotion to our Lord. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the Church, to the observance of a holy Lent, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. Let us pray for grace to keep Lent faithfully. Holy God, our lives are laid open before you. Rescue us from the chaos of sin, and through the death of your Son, bring us healing and make us whole in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We hear readings from Scripture. A reading from the prophet Joel. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like blackness spread upon the mountains. A great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people. Sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, Spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, Where is their God? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. We are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. 
we entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labours, sleepless nights, hunger. By purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honour and dishonour, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors, and yet are true, as unknown, and yet are well known, as dying, and see, we are alive, as punished, and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Beware of practising your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the, in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces, so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. I speak in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, Spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. 
Why should it be said among the people, where is their God? On Ash Wednesday, we bring to mind our human weaknesses, our mistakes, and our desire to draw closer to God. Where is their God? Where is their God in all of this? Over the last year, we've probably asked that and been asked that. Where is God? Why are we suffering like this? This pandemic is horrible. It's brought deep suffering near and far. For many of us, we've experienced isolation, fear and loss in new and totally unexpected and unwanted ways. In other places, these experiences are all too familiar. Warfare, lack of access to medical care, exploitation, climate change. They all continue to make suffering a daily reality. But the impact of these things isn't just elsewhere and to other people. Because whenever one of humanity is suffering, then all of humanity suffers. We don't live in isolation. The prophet Joel provides imagery of days of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Some scholars suggest that the emergency that Joel is describing is an ecological one. Joel is associating God's wrath with the experience of a swarm of locusts and environmental ruin. We live in different times. We understand science and the world differently to the prophet Joel. Natural disasters are a devastating part of the risk and possibility of the world. They are not simply the action of a vengeful God throwing out pain and punishment for our failings that causes God displeasure. In Joel's theological worldview, it was a bit different. There, the actions of God, the life and experience of humanity and the whole earth were intertwined into a single ecosystem. Joel cried out for peace between the divine and earthly ecosystems. He longs for abundance in place of destruction and joy in place of desperation. Our understanding of cause and effect have developed and changed. But in the face of great difficulties in our current times, how often have we used the same plea as Joel? We want things to return to normal, return to goodness and a time of abundance and blessing. During this season of Lent, the archbishops and bishops have asked us to consider our place in the whole world. We're asked to think particularly about our impact on the environment and to contemplate our Christian calling and duty to care for the earth. As we think of our ecological responsibilities, more harmonious lives might lead the way to greater cooperation greater celebration of the abundance of the world's resources and a willingness to make long-term our fasting from actions that increase our ecological burden. Bringing change on an individual level only comes after self-examination, prayer, contemplation and considered action. Bringing change in the whole world calls for the reflection, change in action of a whole community of individuals. In a world where our ecological footprints implore us to tread lightly, where might we find life in greater fullness? During Lent, many of us will be focusing on the traditional themes of Lent and the practices of giving alms and fasting and praying. As we consider almsgiving, perhaps rather than asking how much money we can spare or who might be a worthy recipient, we might also ask ourselves what duty we have 
to ensure a fair distribution of the world's resources, and what even small part we're able to play in making decisions for the good of all. In our Gospel reading today, we're warned against hypocrisy. We're warned against obscuring our real character. So perhaps in our prayers, we're particularly asked to find integrity and authenticity, quietly living a life that is itself giving life to others. In our prayer life, we're encouraged to find space to build our individual relationships with God and to know that our prayers do not always have to be public and witnessed. As we've discovered this year, prayer alone is still prayer. God is still here, wherever here is. God still listens and still loves. Even when we are apart physically, God continues to gather our prayers into a distributed community of faith, separated but not separate. And as we fast in the weeks to come, we're asked to think about what fasting from and why we're fasting from it. Perhaps we might fast in a way that guides us to limit an aspect of environmental change. I've mentioned that throughout Lent, I will be giving up my choice of clothing during Lent because I'm going to be wearing my cassock every day. In giving up that choice over my appearance, I hope to reflect too on the impact of the clothes that I usually wear, the chemicals that are used in their cleaning, and the work and living conditions of the people who produce and distribute them. But however you and I observe Lent this year, we can find encouragement that we take this journey paradoxically alone and yet together. Each of us will experience this season differently and find a different focus and perspective. And yet, we're united in our efforts in seeking a new closeness with God. Whatever insights we find along the way, we are called to share. Do not store up treasure for yourself on earth, where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This Lent, may we find treasure so great that its abundance overflows, bringing hope to our lives, that brings hope both in this community and beyond. Let us now call to mind our sin and the infinite mercy of God. God the Father, have mercy on us. God the Son, have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Trinity of love, have mercy on us. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Lord, have mercy. We have ignored your call to serve, as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, 
the pride, hypocrisy and impatience of our lives. Lord, have mercy. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people. Lord, have mercy. Our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. Lord, have mercy. Our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts, and our dishonesty in daily life and work. Lord, have mercy. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs that we have done for our indifference to human need and suffering, and indeed to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbours, and for our prejudice and contempt towards those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Favourably hear us, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation, that we may show your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy forgive what we have been, Help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, in more ordinary times, I would invite you to receive ashes as a sign of the spirit of penitence in which we shall keep this season of Lent. If you have received an Ash Wednesday prayer card, you might like in a moment to trace over the blessed palm ash cross that it bears. Or you might like to trace a cross on your own palm or on your forehead, as a prayerful reminder of the ashes that we would ordinarily receive. God our Father, you create us from the dust of the earth. Grant that these signs may be for us a symbol of our penitence and of our mortality. For it is by your grace alone that we receive eternal life in Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. We remember that we are dust, and to dust we shall return. Turn away from your sin and be faithful to Christ. The Lord enrich you with his grace and nourish you with his blessing. The Lord defend you in trouble and keep you from all evil. The Lord accept your prayers and absolve you from your offences. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen.
since we are justified by faith, we have peace through God our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you, wherever you are. And so we hold one another in a moment of peace. Merciful God, turn us from sin to faithfulness, and from disobedience to love, and prepare us to celebrate the death and resurrection of Christ our Saviour, who is alive and reigns, now and forever. Amen. The Lord is here. The Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For in these 40 days, you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline, we may grow in grace, and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendour of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with saints and angels forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends. And taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it 
in remembrance of me. So Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Christ is the bread of life. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Thomas and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. Draw near with faith. Ordinarily, we would receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for us, and his blood which he shed for us. We long to eat and drink in remembrance that he died for us, and so feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
as we cannot share in communion today, as we would long to. You may like to join in, say, the prayer of spiritual communion. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us both a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace that we may always most thankfully receive these his inestimable gifts and also daily in our endeavour to follow the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God of our pilgrimage, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Refresh and sustain us as we go forward on our journey. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent us his Son. He is the sacrifice for our sins, that we might live through him. If God loves us so much, we ought to love one another. If we love one another, God lives in us. May God the Father, who does not despise the broken spirit, give to you a contrite heart. May Christ, who bore our sins in his body on the tree, heal you by his wounds. May the Holy Spirit, who leads us into all truth, speak to you words of pardon and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord, in the name of Christ. Amen.